All right, I'm gonna introduce you to something called the Hall Effect, which is an interesting effect that is observed when you apply a magnetic field um, perpendicular to the way that current's flowing through a conductor. Um, and so to see what I mean about that, um, here's a battery um, and here's a, a giant block of copper, let's say, and then there's a resistor here. Um, we'll take the dimensions of this block of copper to be like large enough where the, the resistance of this copper is actually pretty low, where most of the resistance in the circuit is really gonna be here. Um, so there's gonna be about two amps kind of running through this circuit, right? And um, so the idea is if you have this battery, the, um, what we call the direction of current is this way. Um, so that's the direction of what we call conventional current, right? But of course, what that means is the direction of electron flow. Well, thank you, Ben Franklin, right? But the direction of electron flow is this way. Um, so here the, whoops, negatively charged electron. So here's the direction of electron flow. Well, so what's gonna happen is those electrons are gonna go around like this. Those negative electrons are gonna to try to come around to the positive side of the battery. So you effectively you have negative charges then that are kind of coming into the block of copper going this way, right? Well, so then what you could imagine is, well, what if I were to come along and put a apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the way that the current is going. So let's say we make a magnetic field that goes into the into the page, into the block of the copper here. So in come these negatively charged particles, negative charges going this way through a field that points in. You can see I'm using like a little left hand rule. You'll get a magnetic force down this way. So what will happen is these negative charges, along with trying to flow through the circuit this way, they're gonna get kind of herded down to the lower side of this um, block. And so this side is gonna kind of build up negative, um, leaving the top side uh, positive, right? If you're kind of herding the electrons down this way. So there's gonna be a voltage difference perpendicular to this thing that's because of the magnetic force on these electrons, um, you know, them getting pushed down this way, right? So one, so, this what's called the Hall effect is if we apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction that current's going, you can get a voltage difference um, uh, perpendicular to the way that the current was going, right? So to get the size of that voltage difference, um, what you can do is you can say that the um, voltage is basically work per charge. Um, so your voltage difference is work per charge. Well, the amount of work that you'd have to do to drag charge down here, well, that's gonna be force times distance uh, over the charge. Well, what force is it? Well, you have the magnetic force dragging this thing down. So you have the magnetic force, F mag, pulling this thing down to the bottom of the, the plate. So this magnetic force is gonna be like QVB on a moving point charge. Um, the distance, um, we'll say, is the you're dragging the thing from one side to the other. If you want to get the, um, the uh, work that it takes to go from one side of this thing to the other. So we'll say QVB times this width, um, and then divided by the charge, which would be Q. And so what you find out is this voltage difference, this extra voltage difference that develops this way, as opposed to the one that was already this way because of the battery, um, that's going to be the velocity of the charge um, times V times the width. Okay. So what's neat about this is you see that by having the field here, you get this voltage difference this way. So this thing makes actually a fabulous field sensor because if you didn't have the field, if, if, the, if this field wasn't here in the first place, then there, why, there would be no voltage difference between the um, top and the bottom of this thing. So you can actually use this device to sense magnetic fields. You could have it in a region where there's no magnetic field, there's no voltage difference, and then if you move into a region where there is one, it'll, it'll show up. Um, so um, this is a, like a Hall effect sensor, and you can, you can measure magnetic fields this way, right? Um, so another neat thing about this is you notice that 
we know that in copper, let's say, the electrons are the charge carrier, so we, we focused on electrons going this way. Now, when you first learned about circuits, you probably had your physics teachers, you know, including myself, like saying, um, well, you know, negative charge is going this way, well, that's like positive charge is going the other way. But is that really the same? What if it were the case that positive charges were the thing that flowed around? Well, let's see what would happen. If it really were positive charges on the move, then you'd have positive charges going this way through a field that points in. You would get, then the positive charges would get deflected down here. So what's neat about this is you can actually tell, this is a way to tell whether the charge carrier, is it negative particles going this way or is it positive particles going the other way? Um, and through this type of an experiment with a material like copper, you can tell definitively that, oh, it actually is electrons going this way. Now, in some semiconductors, the, as it turns out, the, the charge carrier um, is what's called, a, it's what's called a hole. They actually behave like it's actually positive charges on the move. So you see sometimes with um, some semiconductors that when you run this, you'll end up getting this end being positive, which is indicative of, of some kind of movement of positive charge, which they call holes, all right? So you may see that if you um, go farther in, in uh, electricity magnetism and learn about semiconductors. Um, so um, again, negative charges going this way through a field that points in would go here. That would make this end negative, that end positive. If it were positive charges going the other way, you'd have positive charge going this way through a field that points in, that would make this side positive. So it really wouldn't be the same as what we're, as what we're seeing here. Um, so here's our voltage difference that develops. This is your, what's called your Hall voltage. It's a voltage that develops this way, um, where this side becomes positive, this side becomes negative. Um, one more thing you can add onto this is this velocity is actually the drift velocity of those electrons as they move through here. Um, and so we saw uh, earlier that your um, current is related to drift velocity like this, um, NEV drift times A. This is your um, charge number of charges per volume. That's your charge on the electron. That's your drift velocity. And then that's the cross-sectional area of this, um, of this conductor. Um, and so then what you could do is, is kind of substitute in for that. Um, you could put it here to find out what the, what the Hall voltage is. So this drift velocity um, is the thing that would go in here if you're trying to figure out what this um, voltage difference is between the two sides of a conductor.